uh, what goes on in Philly? So just to keep you updated on Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, I'm very worried that we are going to be one of the last states to open because, as you know, Pennsylvania is quite possibly the most important swing state for the 2020 election with Trump and Biden. It actually brought home the nomination slash presidency for Trump. So Pennsylvania is going to be a huge political pawn for the Democrats with the opening of our state because we do have a Governor Wolf who is a Democrat. So yeah. I am very worried he is going to bleed dry Pennsylvania and keep us closed just to spite the president. That's my fear. Yeah, well, I'm thinking now that the actual whole plan all along has come to fruition, um, Obama, the whole establishment all now behind you know, weekend at, at Biden's. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like now, you know, as soon as this thing, the number one, they don't want Trump in, in Pennsylvania, okay, at all, Biden and company. And, you know, as soon as he gets at, we come out of this thing, Obama's going to be in Pennsylvania and Michigan like it's his job. Ohio, Ohio. Florida. So it's like a reincarnation of, of Barack Obama. You know, Michelle is a bigger threat, in my opinion, than Barack himself. I think just like the Oprah factor isn't the Oprah factor anymore, Oprah couldn't bring it home for Stacey Abrams in Georgia. You know, Oprah doesn't have that wow factor that she used to. I do think that Michelle is a powerful force, but I think people have a little bit of Barack fatigue. Yeah, I, I, know, what you, I know what you're saying, but he's just got that thing where he's got the whole machine behind him. And if he says he's holding a rally, boom, between Soros and Bill Ayers and all the sinister people behind Obama's creation, uh, there's going to be 50,000 people there. They're all going to be chanting for Biden. So, you know, that, that's what they're hoping for, if you ask me. But the problem is, is if you let him speak, Biden, that is, for more than 30 seconds, I mean, it's a full-on disaster. And what the, the other problem that Joe Biden has right now is he can't, he doesn't have a voice. And Cuomo really stole his thunder, right? And rightfully so. Cuomo has a platform and a reason to talk. He is the governor of New York. But it just shows you how inept Joe Biden really is. And it's not really appropriate for him to be saying anything right now. So what is he going to do? He really needs to start getting himself back out there. But the problem is, is it's a double-edged sword because when he gets himself back out there, he truly shows these signs of dementia. And it's sad. It's really sad what the Democrats have done to Joe Biden. It sure They're is. using him as a pawn, and they all know he's sick. I mean, that man is not well. Every time he's, he's well. been on, uh, every time he's been on television lately, even though you would be thinking that they're telling him, you know, if you feel like you have to cough, take a sip of water or something, right? Instead, he literally coughs. So I, I wonder if anybody's asking if a guy who's older um, and is in contact with a lot of people. I'm wondering if anybody's asking if he's been tested for COVID. Wow, that's a really tremendous point. I don't know. And he, he is in that range, that age range that is higher risk. So what you're saying does have a lot of merit. It's wacky. Now, a lot of people, Aaron, have been asking me uh, about you in particular. JT, mm -hmm. why is it that you go on the beginning of the show and say this person, that person, the other are going to be on tomorrow and then that and then... You know, it seems like Erin Elmore, she doesn't really like you that much because she always cancels on you. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. So yesterday I got to support a local restaurant. I got Mexican in my stomach. And I, is that, I think that's probably racist to say I got Mexican food now, but uh, I did. And my husband went really wild with the Mexican and he got a stomach ache. So I was playing wife nurse yesterday. And then I had, since we're social distancing, I had to do a drive-by birthday party with my son and his classmates, where we all were in our car beeping horns and made signs for a little kid's Aww. birthday party. All so right. things, unfortunately, get in the way. Um, I'm just glad my husband doesn't have the COVID. I'm glad that he was just had a bellyache from eating too much food. But these are the things that happen when you're the captain of the ship over here. That's right. I understand. And I do apologize because you know I love I'm, you. I'm, I'm breaking chops. I, no one even said I that to me. I, I made it up. Well, I'm here, and I love you guys, and I appreciate it. And... I will do everything I can to make uh, make you guys a top priority because what, you are. What are they saying on the ground level down in your area? Like, how, when do you think they're gonna? When do you think we're gonna? And I know, you know, Aaron was on The Apprentice. 
Yes. So she knew Donald Trump long before he was the president of the U.S. She's yes. on Turning Point. She's on Mar-a-Lago, all that stuff. What I are am. you hearing on, like, some people being allowed to go back to work? Look, I think that the people that have already tested positive for COVID and recovered and now have a negative test, I think people like that are no longer a risk to society and they should be allowed to go back. But the problem is, is I don't like government interference, right? I don't want someone to be like, I need you to prove this to me because that violates medical laws, which are, are generally known as HIPAA laws. So I don't really want it to be the, the, the state is so in, involved in my medical life, but those people should be able to go back as soon as possible. I also think that the conservative states like Texas, Florida, the Carolinas, Tennessee are going to be quicker to open because they're not in, they're, they're not fighting with the president. They want to see the economy re regain momentum and steam and be productive. So I think that those kinds of states will go first. I think the New Yorks, the Pennsylvanias, the Californias are going to take even longer. He even said yesterday, President Trump, I think, gave a really great speech. And he said some states are going to open almost immediately, I think, maybe immediately rather. And I think some of those states will be the more rural states that don't have a lot of cases, that have contained cases, that have, you know, natural social social distancing and those states will be allowed to go about business as usual let's just pray and hope that we don't have a spike yeah i think um you know being here in new york city we're probably going to be on the later end of the stick of reopenings is probably going to yeah. be you know some kind of but you know couldn't couldn't i don't know i just feel like you know the government is so disconnected from technology that you know you could just if someone gets a, a, a positive test and a negative test, uh, they can consent to putting that time-stamped answer, yes or no, with the date on it, and have it in their phone. If someone has to show it, they can just show, here, positive, last tested, negative, done. Right. right. You don't have to start giving, violating every HIPAA law and letting the government track every last molecule in my body. Yeah, I don't love that. I don't love, you know, I don't even love the mandatory mask wearing because it's, it is additional government interference. And I do think the competing interest is as public health and safety. I, I understand that. But it's really hard when, when you let the government start controlling your life. They they won't take an inch. They will want a mile. And that's what scares me. It's a slippery slope. Yeah, I, I you know, once once we let them in, it's like I had I had someone on yesterday that we were talking about you know, when you say, well, the government, the government promises they'll only use it for tracking you because of Corona. Um, okay. But the government also <laughs> promised in the FISA courts that they weren't going to use this to go after Americans. It was for internationals and they can only go after Americans in certain circumstances. Right. And then once the government has control of the whole process, there's no process. So, you know, I you can't get them out once they're in, it's a one way street. No doubt about it. It's like, and you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. That's what I always say. Yeah, it's like you, they're like roaches. You're never getting rid yeah. of them. You know what I mean? You got to literally just move out for a month and fumigate the place, bomb it or something. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Usually, you know, some people that come on liquid lunch, I have to encourage them a little bit to uh, have a cocktail. Other I'm not people, one of those people come in like their dirty little secret and they're willing to have one before they go on. Uh, other people, we get them there. And you, you come in bearing your own stuff, usually. Yeah, so I bring, I'm surprised I you, you have uh, nothing today. I, so I decided during the rest of this quarantine that I need to just sort of dry it all out. Because as we all know, this is kind of like Groundhog's Day, right? Every day is the same day. And if you add wine into that mix, it just becomes very, very cloudy. So I'm going uh, into the rest of my quarantine with clarity and I'm gonna eat well, and I'm gonna exercise, and try to emerge from this, for, emerge from the ashes like a phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> right? So wait, real quickly, I at the beginning of the show, you mentioned Democrats and how sometimes you allow them on and you get along with them. Um, guess where I was, and I'll send a picture to you guys afterwards. I was just with Democrat Governor former governor of Pennsylvania, former mayor of Philadelphia, former district attorney of Philadelphia, Governor Ed Rendell, wow. who is a good man. He's a good friend and a good man. Wow. So I, I just I was like, over at his I home. I like Ed Rendell. I, you know, I, I, don't, do too. I don't have He sat from... six feet away from me. Socially distance. What? Socially distance. We socially distance. <laughs> um, and we just had a good chat. We talked not just politics, but 
you know, about life and um, he's doing well and surviving quarantine and thinks that our state hasn't hit its peak yet. We were a little slower than the others and that we're going to be a little later to get open as we've touched on before, but we'll get there. And I hope to God that it happens sooner rather than later, but also safely.